I'm 3D printing a giant version of this iconic 1980s Lego kit, the 8860 car chassis. In this video, I'm gonna tackle the incredible four-cylinder boxer engine, and that's the size of the piston. video that I put out just before Christmas I built these incredible seats and in this video I'm building this beautiful engine stick around to see how that works out many people just like me have very fond memories of this kit from their childhood um, so I'm going to start by responding to a few of those comments first of all a few people asked if they could see the chair working it's not fixed down to the chassis yet obviously so I can't uh, slide it back and forwards on the rack and pinion um, I haven't got the elastic band on it yet so it won't stay in place but I think it'll be okay once the band's on there kind of wants to stay there one of my subscribers RLB left me a link which is an interview with one of the original designers of this kit a man named Jan I'm particularly cool to find out that this was one of his favorite kits I'll leave a link in the description below to that video. The Technic stuff's right at the start and well worth a watch. Finally, if you're a fan of these early LEGO Technic kits, then check out this Facebook page called Square Pistons. I'll also leave a link in the description. Since I decided to build this kit, what I've really been looking forward to is the engine. But in order to make sure the engine moves freely, I spent quite a lot of time on the piston design and adding bearings to the knuckles where needed. So let's take a closer look at those now. The piston is printed in several parts. There's the outer case, and then there's this internal piece. I printed this separately so that I could get the fit correct with the knuckle. And then once that was correct, I could drop it down inside and glue it in place. And then of course, there's the studs that go on the top and they're just uh, glued in place like so. The connection between the knuckle and the piston has to run smoothly. I created this special knuckle which has these bearings on the side. The bearings are um, held in place with these pegs which go into the knuckle. Caps go on the top of the bearings. And now we've got a nice smooth interface between the two parts. So the final part is to add the uh, second knuckle. And this one has a slightly enlarged hole in it and it uses one of these sleeves. This is a steel sleeve with I think a PTFE lining and it's just a push fit into the knuckle and then that gives a much nicer bearing surface for this all to run on. Well just this piston alone is hugely satisfying but I feel it's time now we get on and build the rest of the kit because I've got a huge box of parts waiting to be assembled. Now these beams have been joined together in the middle using the old technique that I've always used because um, that's as long as I can fit on my bed. So then I glue them together in the middle here. I have just received a belt printer, which is very exciting. And these beams here have been printed on the belt printer in one piece. How exciting is that? So from now on, things are gonna be a lot easier. Got my usual fine adjustment tool. What I am particularly pleased about is finding this really nice color blue. Most of the blues I have are too dark. And this is actually medium blue from 3D Filiprint. And so is this yellow from 3D Filiprint. Everything else is Polymaker. Bearings. There we go. So there are the bearings fitted. Jan from Lego who uh, came up with a lot of the Technic ideas that actually he was the guy that started drilling holes through original Technic B, uh, sorry, just Lego beams to come up with the Technic hole Lego beam, which is kind of interesting. Starting to look like an engine. I don't seem to have made the cone for the top of the uh, exhaust. Huh. Well, 
Right, I created the CAD for those parts that were missing and they're printing, so I'm gonna just carry on and build the piston uh, assembly. On Christmas Day in 1980 something, I totally got this bit wrong. And um, it's basically because I never noticed that these cogs, the 24 tooth cog, had this bit in here to take the axle in. I don't know why, I just didn't see it. And so when I looked at the picture, I put the axle in that part of the cog, which of course made assembling the engine really difficult because the axles just kept wanting to move about. Pistons the wrong way around. How are they going to move? Kind of. I mean, it feels like there's quite a lot of friction there, and it's mostly the fit of these pistons. Well, that one's okay. That one's tight. The cogs feel like they're slightly too wide in the gap that's uh, that's there. Okay, well, I can adjust that. Not pretty, but no one's gonna know. There's still quite a lot of friction, and I think that's just all this plastic on plastic bearing surfaces. So maybe I have to do something about that. I mean, I could just try some kind of PTFE lubrication on there or something, or something like silicon. Certainly workable, especially if it's driven from the geared end here. the fan. Fresh off the printer, I've got these bits to finish off the exhaust. If you find your printer's pushing down too hard on the bed and you get that lip on the inside edge, the hat as it's sometimes called, get yourself one of these deburring tools. I'll leave a link in the description. Dead easy to use and it just takes that lip off really quickly. Nice. My rubber band selection isn't terribly good. It's probably big enough, but uh, this is three rubber bands left by the postman. Now I think it's a complete engine apart from the pipework. No, wait, there's another thing, the taps. These aren't perfect. I literally threw these together last night and printed them out and I didn't actually measure it, I did it all by eye. So I might improve these. Look at that beast. So the last bit of detail is the pipe work. Um, I have an idea for that. Pipe lag in here in black, but it's a bit soft and it kinks really easily. And the stuff I used on the go-kart was much better than this. Probably a little bit big, to be honest. It is. Let's cut some down. These are just uh, way too big and just don't look right. It's like trying to squeeze a marshmallow into a piggy bank. I'm gonna revisit that at a later date. Yep. I love it. I just really wanna see this running. Mm. I've been up and I caddied this part up and printed it out. So that should fit my drill. So let's see if it works. Kind of fits, here we go. Oh, baby! <laughs> That's awesome! Hang on a minute, <laughs> let me get over there a bit. Oh my God, that's so cool. I don't know how hard to push it. I think it will start melting the PLA. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my God, it's so enjoyable. Right, I'm gonna try it on the back end, see if we can get them going even faster. It's actually giving me another idea though, straight away, I'm thinking about something else. Try it direct drive, which is probably a terrible idea. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> terrible idea. I did make this out of PLA to be fair. I've had an even better idea how to power this. Um, but for that, I want to get onto my CAD package and show you what I'm going to do. I want to try and do it anyway. Hopefully it will work. This is my CAD file in uh, Alibra Design and uh, obviously a complete engine. But what I have up my sleeve is uh, this. This is my motor design from when I made the Lego Go-Kart radio controlled. And I still have this motor, so I thought I could attach it quite easily, go through another gear, so this uh, another 3 to 1 reduction, and then a further 3 to 1 reduction, so 9 to 1 in total. And I think there might be enough torque then to get it moving. The motor off of my RC Go-Kart. This has got a brushless motor in it, and it's really geared for speed, so I'm really not sure there's going to be enough torque. But it's got to be worth a go, isn't it? I even made the uh, connectors for the motor so they looked like Lego connectors. And it plugs into the back. And then power actually comes out of this uh, box here. And there was a couple of LiPo sat inside of that. fan came on. There's a fan cooler inside of the motor here. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, come on! Holy! <laughs> Power, in the words of Clarkson. Here we go. I feel like I should have glasses on or something. It feels like this cog is going to detonate. Not going to lie, that's genuine concern on my face. All right, that's bonkers. <laughs> That's got to be the coolest thing I've ever made. Oh, I love it. <laughs> okay. I think I might have just destroyed it. Actually, the motor was stalling because I'd thrown a piston. I just hadn't noticed yet. Let's take a look at it in slow motion. Looks like I threw one on the other side as well. I can't help thinking it sounds a bit like a diesel engine, which I kind of like. Well, this could be the coolest thing I've ever made. Maybe let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Like, share and subscribe. Bye.